first toy I've ever played with was actually made by my grandpa. I know. I couldn't believe it either. Here I am, used to playing with toys that make noise, toys that flash, toys that transform, toys that are bright and colorful, and made by large companies trying to take our parents' money. But there I was, in the hot Beijing summer, bored from TV and reading, sitting in my grandpa's home, asking him to take me to buy some real toys. And instead of giving in to a seven-year-old boy and going and buying me something new, my grandpa said to me, "You want a toy? I got one. That's perfect for you." He started to look for something in his closet, like a little boy desperately digging for that buried treasure. And when he showed me six pieces of wood, ah,、uh, I must admit I was a little disappointed. It didn't look like a toy. In fact, it looked like something was broken. But I was so wrong, because within one minute. My grandpa managed to turn these six little pieces of wood into a ball. It was like magic. Then the hard part came. My grandpa asked me to disassemble it, which was an even bigger challenge. I didn't know where to start. I wanted to solve it, but how? So I fiddled. And tinkered, and eventually I worked it out. It became my new obsession. This toy, these six wooden pieces, gave me hours and hours of enjoyment. Best of all, it was made by my grandpa. How amazing is that? This toy was the start of my grandma's engineering career, and is what has inspired me to be like my grandpa, an engineer who can think about and create cool things, even toys. A few months later, my grandpa came to visit, and we went skiing at Grouse Mountain. As we were waiting for the sky ride, I caught my grandpa staring at the big window of the motor room. Checking out the two huge motors that are driving thick steel cables. Like him, I became mesmerized by the mechanics of the machine. Its power and performance was amazing. The gondola was also super cool. It was big and heavy, and I was surprised that there were just cables carrying it up. As we were going up the mountain, I told my grandpa that I wish I could take the sky ride home, because it was so cool and awesome. My grandpa just smiled. He told me that one day I would. Once we returned to Beijing, my grandpa, the creative whiz and master maker, as I now know him to be. Getting to work designing a blueprint. Every time I video call him, I always ask, "Grandpa, what are you up to? What cool things are you making?" Oh, nothing, he would say. Until one day, he showed me a most truly magnificent miniature sky ride with two moving cable cars suspended. On cables spinning around a motor-operated bowwheel, I couldn't believe my eyes. I was so sure. I was convinced that my grandpa is the best grandpa any kid could ever have. Not just because he made super awesome toys, but because he taught me something special. He showed me. That when you create your own toys, they 
are one of a kind. They are unique. He made me realize that what you can make is far more special than any brand new Lego set. That was it. I was so sure now. I want to be just like my grandpa. I want to be a maker of amazing things. I want to be a creator of cool stuff. I told my grandpa that I want to be just like him. He just smiled and said that one day I would. So what did I do? I got to work. At that time, I was obsessed with reading the Harry Potter series. And I was looking forward to getting a wand. But they were expensive and hard to come by. But what kind of wizard would I be without my very own wand? Not a good one, I'm sure. So I made my own. I created it from tin foil and a chopstick. And now I'm ready to cast all my spells without having to buy a toy made by large companies trying to take our parents' money. My next creation was my own fully customized tablet, the Bee Pad. <laughs> the Bee is for Burton, just in case you weren't sure. <laughs> Although it might be super basic, I love it. Why? Because it is the first Bee Pad in the world. It is special and unique. So now, Whenever an idea strikes, I start thinking about how I can create it. I get straight to work. Sketching, planning, developing prototypes, tinkering, reflecting, redoing, until I get something I'm happy with. But I'm not always successful in creating something, and that's OK. It's all about practicing. Of course, you won't see a working B phone coming out of my garage just yet. After all, I'm still learning. But today, learning is not just memorizing a bunch of information anymore. That is not what the world needs. And isn't that why we have Google? What the world needs now are people like you and me, like my grandpa. What the world needs now are people who are creative, imaginative, and can solve problems. What the world needs now are people who have a maker's mindset. But what is a maker's mindset, you ask? A maker's mindset is knowing that creativity is our greatest asset. It is finding out how things work. It is analyzing a problem and finding ways to solve it. And it is being curious and unlocking our imagination. But it's more than just taking things apart and making something new. A maker's mindset is also about embracing failure, taking risks, and developing perseverance. Most importantly, it is about identifying problems as they arise and then coming up with ways to learn, unlearn, and relearn. Just like my grandpa's puzzle. Thou cry me to pull it apart piece by piece and then put it back together again and again. And the best thing is that having a maker's mindset is not just for creating toys and cool stuff. It's a really useful skill for learning, too. It teaches you how to learn, unlearn, and relearn, which will come in handy when you come across new equations. It prepares us to identify opportunities and find innovative solutions, which will be useful in our science projects. And it gives us confidence to respond to new challenges which will be helpful even beyond school. But wait, there's more. Because the most important benefit 
of developing a maker's mindset is preparing yourself for the future. I'm only nine, but I can tell that there are so many problems in the world we are trying to solve. For this, we need people who can think deeply, who are prepared to fail and take risks and make something nobody ever designed before. Because we definitely need out of the box and out of the ordinary solutions that only people with a maker's mindset can create. My grandpa's a maker. I am a maker. We are all makers. Today, we may make wands out of chopsticks or tablets out of cardboard, but it's a start. So let's all start developing a maker's mindset. Let's find out how things work. Let's analyze a problem and find ways to solve it. And let's be curious and unlock our imagination. Together, we can be makers of not just amazing things, but more importantly, makers of a better and brighter future. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.